The following video contains mature content in both language and opinion. You have been warned. Enjoy. Hello everyone, this is Mitch from Mitch's Rant Time, and welcome to SJW 101. This will be your course on all things social justice warrior. We'll be covering various topics throughout this course, and we'll be discussing different concepts, ideas, theories, quotation mark facts, and other things revolving around social justice. Today's lesson will be an overture of everything I'll cover, and the main basic concept at the root of all social justice, and this is just kind of all sort of cult-like in-groups in general. The narrative. Now, if you ever ran into any sort of social justice advocate or taken a social justice course at a university, or watched you know any BuzzFeed videos, you know that there's a distinct narrative that all follow. That narrative being that if you're of quote unquote a minority, which ironically is the in group, or you are a part of the quote unquote privileged or power class, the out group you have a bias against each other. Now they don't reflect too much on the bias that those who are in the in-group, the minorities, have towards the out-group. The focus is strictly on the out-group's view on the in-group. Now this may be confusing as I use in-group to describe the minorities because the in-group is very much, it's, it's the group that social justice advocates for. It's those they see as being important, as being in need of rights. They're the in-group. Those are the people whose opinions they value. If you go into a discussion forum, make a YouTube video, tweet at people, and you meet their criteria to be in this group, your opinion is seen as valid. However, if you are not, like say you're, you're white, or rich, or male, or straight, or cisgender, you will be treated as the outgroup. Your opinion will be devalued on basis of being the outgroup. This is a mentality that, like I said, a lot of cults have. A lot of religions have this too. You dismiss someone because they, oh, you don't understand. You're not this. You have to be this to understand. Um, and that's not a good way to convince people that you're advocating for something good or that pe they should take your advocacy seriously but to continue on with the narrative the narrative is essentially that the in-group is oppressed and treated poorly by the out-group and that the out-group has biases inherent whether they choose to reject them or don't have them or show any evidence of them existing they have biases against the in-group now when challenged on this, um, the references will always be to old elements of racism and sexism. The only thing somewhat modern are uh, issues with same-sex marriage or issues uh, for transgender people. Usually they have to pull from the past, and I don't mean a couple years ago, I'm referring to 60 years ago, 100 years ago, thousands of years ago. Things that have been dealt with, wrongs that have been righted. And they'll rely on those to sell, push this narrative that the, in, the out group always does this to the in group, always is oppressive to the in group. Now where there's some issues with that is that it's a generalization one. It's, it's stating that if you're in the, you're in the out group, not by action, not by choice, not by belief, but by race, gender, economic status, your sexual preference, that things that you shouldn't be judged on, you're being judged on, and things that have nothing to do with, with, with the action of being a racist or a sexist or oppressing people, they're being given that connotation. They're applying the connotation of racist and in power to white. It's a conflation that really muddies things and makes it difficult to have any honest or intellectual discussion about like actual issues and problems.
And they do the same for the opposite. Um, and this is where the real racism comes in. I mean, it's racist to do that to white people, but this is where the real, like, fucked up racism comes in. The narrative is that if you are of a racial minority, primarily black, you are inherently downtrodden. You are inherently disadvantaged, which is racist. It is a derivative of the old view on blacks and non other non-whites from the 60s, from the 1800s, the slave era, when people justified slavery or segregation, stating that those groups were inherently disadvantaged. They were inherently inferior. However, the narrative isn't packaged in a way that states that. It's not coming from the mindset of a... I mean, a lot of times it's a guilty white liberal saying it, but it's not coming from the mindset of a white racist. The narrative is being played from the mindset of an upset minority. Someone who feels downtrodden. However, most of the time, the people who say they're downtrodden are not. They're, they're very privileged. They are posting it to Instagram and YouTube. They're making money off of it. They're working at BuzzFeed. They, they're pretty privileged people. And I don't fault them for stating their opinion. You can have your opinion. I think everyone has the right to state their opinion and express their views. Um, however, your reasoning and your logic are up for criticism, and this is what we're doing. So the narrative is sold that, or at least pushed, that if you are in the minority, you are automatically downtrodden and held down by society. Now, the reasons, we'll get into that in a, a later session, but this is what's being pushed. And it's not just racial minorities. It's including LGBT, women, even certain religions in these minority groups. And it's making statement without reason. It's just stating well, women are the minority, they're held down by society, we sexualize women, and women are just objects, and we don't treat them like people. It's assuming that that's our culture. That's the final part of the narrative I want to be, you know, get out to you guys. It's a large generalization about Western culture, and it is a complete misrepresentation. American culture and Western culture are not ones that view anyone as being inferior, at least on the basis of their race, any identity you can apply to them. They don't view that as being necessarily inferior. They view ideas and actions as being inferior. You going out and beating up someone because they're different is inferior to discussing your issue with them. Cultures and nations that abuse people or put people in prison simply for who they are, those ideas are inferior. But those people in Western nations who look like the people in those nations that do that are not inferior by definition of being that same ethnicity. Just because gay people or LGBT are being seen as vile, they're being mischaracterized based on, on their sexuality in Iran or could be in the U.S. depending on the religion of the person, you know, but it's a personal thing, doesn't mean that the entirety of the United States is anti-LGBT. The logic is broken, but the reason is to sell a narrative. That narrative being, if you are X, Y, Z and Q, you are downtrodden and hurt by society. However, if you are these specific small labels, you are automatically the aggressor, the oppressor, and need to be hindered. You need to be reeled back. Now, in this narrative or other beliefs I'll be going over, things like uh, how racism works and sexism works, how bias works and exposing that there is bias. In fact, the concept of social justice is extremely biased in a negative way. I'll also be going over logical fallacies and struggles that, that they seem to have, forming good reasoned arguments, as well as how they handle being challenged on their opinions. So if you'd like to see more, please like, 
subscribe, share it to people. I am really, really looking forward to seeing how this goes. The reason why I'm doing this is right, right now, there's a lot of controversy among people who talk about this thing usually, and me being young and new and a different face and a bit different politically, it might help to uh, offer a fresh perspective. I, I'd like to talk to people about these things. I talk to people who are social justice advocates on a day-to-day -day basis, people who cannot refrain from so many reasoning just don'ts and have poor logic and rely on emotion to make their points and who just, they remind me so much of when I was a little bit younger, a few years back, and I was arguing with really far-right Christians who were really religious and couldn't maintain good logic, sound logic. They, they, they had invalid arguments or they had valid arguments based on completely false premises. And I just, I couldn't stand watching that. And a lot of friends I made challenging that are now accepting this new bullshit, which has been around for a while, but has become really popular in the last year and a half. And I just can't stand it. <laughs> I can't stand seeing people who were able to point out invalid arguments and insound arguments and pointing out flawed reasoning and pointing out appeals to emotion and other fallacies are now committing the same things and not recognizing it and being condescending and dismissive to anyone who says, hey, you, 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 you're doing bad. You're doing bad, son. You're doing bad, kid. So I hope you gain something from this and share this. Subscribe, and hope to see you next time. Stay studious, kids.